Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I would like to welcome everyone to the uh, Narana Sophia International TV Workshop for the first uh, workshop session. I would like to start the presentation uh, with the comprehensive TV examination. My uh, talk is principally based on uh, the current American Society of Echocardiographic Guidelines. You can download these uh, guidelines from so the, my objective of the lecture is to recognize and acquire all the 828 views comprising com comprehensive TE examination and explain the use of these 28 views and something about the simultaneous multiplane imaging which has been described in the present guidelines and some of the additional views used for specific structural imaging. So these are the objective of this talk. Before going to the actual, uh, actual practice, we should know about some of the probe manipulation we are going to do to obtain these images. So <coughs> I, I, I assume that many of people are, many of uh, us are known about the TE probe. So uh, if you look at the probe manipulation, the first manipulation we will use is to introduce a probe into the uh, is a facts to a certain depth or into the stomach. So this uh, term we call it as advancing the probe or pulling the probe in the opposite direction we call it as withdrawing the probe. Okay. So the first manipulation is advancing and withdrawing. Then turning the probe mechanically towards right side. The so clockwise rotation we will tell that is to visualize the right first structure, heart structures. Then counterclockwise rotation to visualize the left, left side uh, cardiac structures that is uh, called uh, <coughs> clockwise rotation, counterclockwise rotation, and clockwise rotation. Then the probe tip can be flexed or moved in four different directions using two knobs available in the uh, probe handle. You can see the large wheel as well as the small wheel. So large wheel will allow a flexion of the probe tip in the anteroposterior axis. So when you clockwise rotate the large wheel, the probe tip will be flexed anteriorly in the anterior axis and when you counterclockwise rotate the same wheel, it will move posteriorly, that will call the retroflexion. So this movement is called anti-flexion and retroflexion and the small wheel is used to rotate the probe tip to on lateral axis. So if you turn the probe, uh, the, the wheel to rightward or clockwise direction, it will move towards a rightward flexion, we call it a right right flexion, or on the counterclockwise rotation, it is it is termed as a leftward flexion. So this is the probe manipulation. Mechanically, we'll do on the probe, uh, on the uh, probe, and we know that uh, all the images we can visualize. We are using at the three, uh, upper esophageal level, mid esophageal level, and transgastric level. So these three views will, uh, levels will be used for visualizing all the 28 views. Now coming to the transducer angle, if you can see there are two buttons are available on the probe which will be used to uh, rotate the trans multiplane angle. Okay. Angulation can be increased from 0 to 180 degree. So when you call, when, when you increase or rotate the angle to 0 to 180 degree, we call it the forward rotation. And, then, and the backward, uh, when, when we use it from 180 degree to 0 degree, we call it a backward rotation. So this electronic uh, rotation of the uh, angulation or plane is very important for uh, most of our T, uh, T imaging. So one, one important thing you should understand is that in 0 degree, you will see the right heart structure of the heart placed on the left side of the imaging display. As you rotate the angle forward towards 90 degree, you will see the left side side of the structure actually moves inferiorly towards the patient's spine. So from four chamber view, this becomes a two chamber view. So, so the angulation is like that, zero degree like that. When it moves to 90 degree, the imaging plane moves in the focused direction. And from 90, 90 degree to 180 degree, you will see a mirror image of the uh, zero degree, where you will see the left side is heart structure placed on the left side of the imaging display. So the angular rotation occurs in a counterclockwise manner when rotating forward from <coughs> zero to 180 degree. This, imaging, this rotate, this should be kept in mind when you are uh, 
interrogating the structures. Now, about the 28 views of comprehensivity examination, as I have told, the previous guideline they published in 1999 suggested 20 views for comprehensive examination. Eight more additional views have been added, and these include midisophageal foil chamber view, midisophageal modified bicaval tricuspid view, and upper esophageal right and left pulmonary venous view, and midisophageal left atrial appendage view, and there are four transgastic views one transgastic apical short axis view, we will see all those one by one, a transgastic long axis view, and two transgastic RV views, that is RV basal view and RV inflow outflow view. So these additional views emphasize the imaging of all cardiac structure in the comprehensive TE examination, like four cardiac chambers, four cardiac heart walls, and the great vessels. So in nutshell, there are 15 midisophageal views, 9 transgastic view and 4 aortic views. So all together come to 28 views. So we'll first go into the midisophageal views, 0 to views from number 1. When you insert the probe first, you will see uh, at the 0 degree, you will see the midisophageal 5 chamber view. Here you can see the aortic valve here and LVOT and this view and mitral valve. So here the mitral valve, the mitral leaflet curve you are going to see is A2 and P1, A2 and A1 here, and that A1 segment will be passing with the P1 segment of the PM1. So on your left hand side, you will see the anterior mitral leaflet, on right hand side, you will see the posterior mitral leaflet, the P1 segment. And this is the huh? first view we will see once you insert the probe. From this view, if you advance the probe a little bit uh, down, you will uh, uh, Sometimes you may need a little bit of retroflexion to take out the aorta out, out of the view. You will get the midisophageal four chamber view. Here you can see the left ventricle, left atrium, right atrium, and uh, right uh, right ventricle, mitral valve, and tricuspid. And left ventricular walls are anterolateral wall and infraceptral wall. Anterolateral wall on your right hand side and infraceptral wall on the left hand side. And the mitral valve, the leaflet segments are. Here, anterior mitral leaflet, you will see the A3 and A2 segment, which will be crafting with the P2 and P1 segment. So, this you should remember. From this view, if you rotate the angle forward towards around 50 to 70 degree, you will get the mitral commissural view. Again, this view is very important for mitral valve examination, this <coughs> where you can get the commissural diameter of the mitral valve. As well as, well as you can see, this wall is on the right hand side is an anterior anterolateral wall and this one becomes an inferior or infralateral uh, wall of the LV. So you can look at the uh, uh, mitral segments. Uh, you can see, uh, look for structures nearby. This is the coronary sinus in short axis view. That means it is posterior structure in the AV group. So obviously this segment will be a P3 segment. Here will be P1 segment and in between you will get the A2 segment of the anterior mitral leaflet. This is the view 3 mitral commissural view. Now from this view, if you rotate the angle around 80 to 90 or 100 degree, you will get the midisophageal two chamber view where you will see the left atrium and left ventricle. And this view is very important for assessing the left ventricular function. You will see the anterior wall on your the right hand side anterior wall, entire anterior wall of the LV on the right hand side and inferior wall on the left hand side. I can see the circumflex artery in cross section in the AV group here and, that, and on the top of it there is a left atrial appendage. On, on, on the posterior side you can see the cross section of the coronary sinus. So this is a <coughs> two chamber view at 90 degree. Now from this view you again rotate the angle to around 120 to 140 degree, you will get the view number 5 that is the midisophageal long axis view. Here you can see the LV long axis, mitral valve and aortic valve in position. Okay, the, the ventricular walls are anteroceptor walls here in the right hand side and the infralateral wall here. And mitral valve, typically the segments co-opting at this uh, view is which very important for mitral, mitral uh, valve examination is A2 and P2 segment coaptation. And uh, here you will get the anteroposterior diameter of the mitral valve. Okay. And you can also see the aortic, aortic valve and aortic valve pathology and the proximal part of the ascending aorta. Now from this view, so midisphagial long axis view, 
you withdraw the probe, you will see more of the ascending I aortic valve long axis. It will become a, a mediocephalgeal aortic valve long axis view. You can see the aortic valve as well as uh, aortic root, the sinus, ST, ST junction, and part of the ascending aorta you can see. This, this is uh, view number six, aortic valve long axis view. From this view, you withdraw and as well as turn back the angle towards 90 to 110 degree. This is because uh, aorta actually curves from left to right side to become the arch. So you may have to bring back the angle little bit to 90 to 110 degree to get the ascending aorta long axis view. Okay. Again, this view is important for assessing the dimensions of the ascending aorta, especially looking for aortic pathology, dissection, flap, etc. You can see the short axis view of the right pulmonary artery in this view. Now, coming to the next view, from the previous view, if you turn the angle back to 0 to 30 degree, you will going to see, so he was in the long axis view of the iota previously, ascending iota, now we turn back the uh, angle to 0 to 30 degree, you are going to get a short axis view of the ascending iota here, and you can uh, look for the contour of the aortic, uh, ascending iota, any atromo here. And you can also see the main pulmonary artery by forgetting main, main pulmonary artery is going to the right pulmonary artery here. So main pulmonary artery sometimes you may visualize the pulmonary valve. Left pulmonary artery is shadowed out because of the left main bronchus here. So in the left hand side of the image you can see a cross sectional area uh, view of the superior vena cava here. Okay. So this is the mediocephalgeal ascending aorta short axis. <laughs> Now coming to the next view, from the mediocephalgeal ascending short axis view, if you turn the probe clockwise towards the right side, you will typically see the right pulmonary vein view. This is a mediocephalgeal right pulmonary vein view. Here you can see the superior right pulmonary vein. Here will be the inferior right pulmonary vein. The superior pulmonary vein is, a, is in line with the ultrasound beam, so we can use a doctor insonation for assessing any, if there is any flow reversal in the case of a mitral regurgitation or not. So again, you can see the short uh, cross-sectional view or short axis view of the superior vena cava here and the ascending arva here. Now, from that view, you advance the probe a little bit and increase the angle and to around, rotate the angle to 25 to 45 degree and little bit of anti-flexion, you are going to get Ascent uh, aortic valve short axis view. So, all the three cusps of aortic valve can be visualized here. The right coronary cusp is uh, placed in the bottom of the uh, field. It is uh, almost adjacent to the right ventricle outflow tract. This is the RV and right ventricle outflow tract. So, this is the right coronary cusp. Non coronary cusp is always close to the interatrial septum, and the other cusp is the left coronary cusp. So. So, and you can also see the tricuspid valve here, as well as some, some portion of the pulmonary valve. <coughs> From this view, if you again rotate to, so from 25 to 45, you rotate the angle forward towards a 50 to 70 degree, and little more anti-flexion, you will get mediocephalgeal RV inflow outflow view. So, you may have to have a little bit of anti-flexion to get the pulmonary view in, uh, to clear um, pulmonary valve can be clearly seen. So uh, this is uh, again an important view for assessment of the RVOT, especially RVOT diameter. If you are interested to calculate the RV stroke volume, you can also see the tricuspid valve and tricuspid regurgitation. This is a very good view. Most of the time, TRZ will be uh, directing towards the intraarterial septum. So this can be a very good view for Doppler uh, Doppler insonation. So that comes uh, that becomes the RV intro view of the mediocephalgeal position. Now, from this view, this is a new view they have described in the current guidelines. If you increase, if you rotate the uh, angle to 50 to 70 degrees, this is what they described, you can get a modified bicaval tricuspid value. But most of, practically, most of the time, it, at this particular angle, 50 to 70 degrees, it is very difficult to get the tricuspid valve. So we may have to increase the angle somewhat around 120 or one, 120 to 125 degrees. You will get the tricuspid valve. 
again, this is a good view for assessing the tricuspid valve, PR, and right ventricular systolic pressure measurement. Now, now, from this view, if you rotate the angle to 90 to 110 degree and rotate the probe clockwise towards the right heart structures, you will get typically the mediesophageal bicaval view, the view number 13. So here you can see the SVC, IVC. More importantly, you should evaluate the intraatrial septum. So here in the SVC side of the intraatrial septum, the septum is thickened. This is the superior limbus, and this portion is the thin fossa valleys where you should look for, specifically look for patent for amenovae. And this portion, the thickened portion here, which separates the smooth portion of the right atrium from the uh, pectineal muscle is called the twister terminalis. This portion is the right atrial appendage, and this is the RA body. So this becomes the mediesophageal bicaval view. Now, from this view, if you turn the probe towards clockwise, you are going to get the upper right upper esophageal right pulmonary vein view. Again, this is a right superior pulmonary vein. It's a good view for assessing the pulmonary venous Doppler, especially for flow reversal in the case of mitral regurgitation. And this is the pulmonary inferior, inferior pulmonary vein on the right side, which is not a good view for uh, ultrasound insonation. From this view, if you turn the probe counterclockwise all the way around the heart towards the left side, you are going to get the left side of the pulmonary veins, right, uh, left upper pulmonary vein or superior pulmonary vein here, and left lower pulmonary vein, which is more horizontally, superior pulmonary vein, again, suitable for ultrasound insonation. So this becomes a number 14, upper esophageal, right and left, left pulmonary venous views. Now from this view, the left upper pulmonary vein, we are actually turned the probe counterclockwise. You you rotate the probe back clockwise, you are going to find the left atrial appendage view, the mediesophageal left atrial appendage view. Again, it's an important view for patients who are presented with a stroke or uh, looks for uh, clots in the left atrial appendage or patient. So this is one of the important view for Doppler assessment, color Doppler, as well as pulse wave Doppler to look for velocity in the uh, LA appendage. And also very important view for uh, LA appendage for uh, procedures. Now that finishes the mediesophageal views. Now we are going to view the transgastric views. Here we have to advance the probe into the stomach and, and the first view you are going to get is the transgastric basal short axis view. So we should note that the probe actually uh, lies in the furnace of the stomach, so which is far from the heart and the diaphragm. So you need to and deflex the probe using the large wheel so that the probe will come in adjacent with the diaphragm and the left ventricle. So if you extreme hand deflection is going to get, you are going to get the basal short axis view where you are going to see the mitral valve in N phase. So anterior mitral leaflet on your left hand side and posterior mitral leaflet on, on your right hand side. So the anterolateral path uh, commissure will be on the lateral uh, on your right hand side and the lateral most uh, segment you will going to see in this view is the P1 segment and the posterior medial commissure will be seen on your left hand side. So this is the AM anterior mitral leaflet and this portion is the posterior mitral leaflet, P1, P2, P3 segment. You can also visualize the, all the basal six segments of the LV that will uh, 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 you can assess for assessment of the region of all motion. Now, from this view, if you slightly relax the and deflection, you are going to visualize the mid papillary view, short axis. Very important view for LV assessment. You can assess uh, the, you, you can visualize the all three coronary territories here. This is the LAD territory supplying the anterior wall. Here will be the circumference for lateral, and this portion, inferior wall and cross sectoral wall, will be supplied by the right coronary artery. So, mid papillary, short axis view, 17 view. From this view, if you completely relax the uh, probe head into neutral, or sometimes you may need a retroflexion, or sometimes you have to advance the probe to get the <coughs> apical short axis view. Again, it's a new view added in the present guideline. You are going to get the four segments of the LV apical uh, zone. So this is a 
apical short axis view, we can assess the region of our motion affecting the apical segments in this particular view. From this LV apical short axis view, you have to rotate, uh, sorry, you have to turn the probe clockwise towards the right side a little bit and uh, rotate the angle to 20 degree, you are going to get uh, you are going to visualize the right side as hot structures, especially the RD and the tricuspid valve. This becomes the RD basal view. You can see the end phase view of the tricuspid leaflet or the three leaflets here. You can uh, use color doppler to look for the uh, PR regurgitation jets. It's origin. <coughs> this is the central leaflet, anterior leaflet, and the posterior leaflet. In the far field, you are going to get the uh, RD outflow track. So near tree, tricuspid valve, far field. RV outflow track and pulmonary valve. Again, now from this view, if you again uh, turn the probe tip towards the right flexion, you are going to get a RV inflow through. Again, practically, this view is difficult to get and uh, to get the uh, inflow as an outflow in the 0 to 20 degree, but a similar view can be seen when you rotate the angle towards. 110 to 120 degree, we are going to get the typical mirror image of this uh, described view as an RD inflow and outflow view. Here you can see the tricuspid valve uh, and the pulmonary valve uh, and the RVOT, uh, RVOT. Now, from the previous view, if you advance the probe into the deep transcastic level and antiflex the probe to the little left flexor, probe turn to left side you are going to get the deep transcastic foil chamber view. Again, very important view for assessment of the aortic valve because aortic valve comes in line with the ultrasound beam. Here, you can assess the, uh, also assess the mitral valve and mitral regurgitation and post mitral repair, the partition depth, etc. because it is not shadowed by the ring, ex uh, ring, ring uh, the mitral valve ring or prosthetic ring. And occasionally you may find a tricuspid valve here. We can use this view for uh, a mode for assessing the TAPSI uh, uh, RV systolic function assessment. This is the deep transcastic five chamber view. Now from the deep uh, five chamber view, if you rotate the angle to 90 to 110 degree, you are going to get the two chamber view, transcastic two chamber view, the LA and the LV. You are going to get the anterior wall of the LV. And in, in the fourth field, and uh, inferior wall of the LV in the uh, near the diaphragm. So, and so you can see the one motion primarily. And more than that, you can assess the mitral valve, especially the sub mitral apparatus, especially the cordic tendine and papillary muscle. And a uh, view can be assessed. This may become an important view for mitral valve repairs to look for a robust caudal length, etc. Mm -hmm. Now, from this view, if you turn the probe rightward and increase the angle to 90 to 100. Rotate the angle to 90 to 110 degree, you are going to get the transcastic RV inflow view. Okay? You can see the inferior wall of the uh, RV here, close to the diaphragm, and the anterior wall of the RV, which is continuing at, towards the uh, RVOT. And the leaflets, which you, you probably may see, is uh, septal as well as posterior leaflet, but that may be a variable in this view. The RV inflow view at 90 to 100. <coughs> now, from the RV inflow view, if you uh, rotate the angle to 120 to 140 degree and counterclockwise rotation, you are going to get the transcastic LV, uh, sorry, long axis view, transcastic long axis view. This view is important uh, for assessing the aortic valve, especially if, if you are not getting the deep transcastic five chamber view, sometimes <coughs> it is very difficult to get it, so this view may be uh, useful for assessing the <coughs> valve pathologies and Doppler interrogation. Now that uh, comes to the end of the transcastic view. Now we have four aortic views are there. So from the transcastic uh, probe position, we are withdrawing the probe. We are withdrawing the probe and rotating the probe counterclockwise all the way to posteriorly, you are going to see the descending thoracic aorta. And you can withdraw the probe in the neutral position towards the mid esophageal level. You can entirely assess the, you can visualize the entire descending thoracic aorta from below upwards. 
you may find in reverse arteries uh, when you uh, use color Doppler, and sometimes you will see hemiacegus vein crossing over the uh, aorta to the uh, acegus venous system towards the right side. Again, this view is important for assessing the aortic atroma and dissection uh, uh, and other aortic pathologies. Now, the short axis, the descending aorta short axis view, if you rotate the angle to 90 degree, 90 to 100 degree, you are going to get the descending aorta long axis view. Again, you are going, uh, this view becomes important, especially when you are uh, planning to a femoro-femoral bypass, to look for a guide replacement or IVP guide replacement or cannula position, this view is extremely important. From the descending thoracic aorta view, you withdraw the probe in the upper esophageal level. What happens, uh, the uh, descending aorta, when it uh, forms as the distal portion of the aortic arch, actually the aortic arch becomes anterior to the esophagus. So, so descending aorta is a posterior esophagus, I regard this anterior to esophagus, so you have to penetrate the probe again. So from, you have to do, from the, uh, you have to do a clockwise rotation of the probe to look for the aortic arch long axis view at the zero degree. Zero degree. So here you can see the, the long axis view, view of the arch of the aorta. Sometimes you will see the denominated vein as close to the aortic arch. So this becomes a 27th view. Now from this view, if you rotate back, uh, rotate the uh, forward, the angle to 70 to 90 degree, you are going to get the aortic arch short axis view. Again, useful for the aortic pathologies like dissection, but this view is very important for assessing the pulmonary valve and main pulmonary artery. You can see the main pulmonary artery and pulmonary valve in the long axis view. You can assess the uh, uh, Doppler assessment, you can do the Doppler assessment of the pulmonary valve function. But, uh, comes to the 28 views of the complete uh, <coughs> comprehensive TA examination. The present guideline also gives some emphasis on simultaneous multiplane imaging because most of the modern equipments are having the facility of uh, uh, visualizing imaging biplane uh, views. So, so to me, I would like to tell you some few facts about this imaging. So, here is a primary view. What we are uh, First, positioning the probe. This is the primary view. Here it is a four chamber, zero degree four chamber view. And the secondary view you are going to get is the two chamber view because this is in the orthogonal plane. You will get the uh, secondary view. Okay. So in the in the second view you are uh, getting the mid commissural commissure view, 60 degree, and the orthogonal plane will be the LV long axis view. So and the third one here it is important. We are getting the 90 degree two chamber view. Now the orthogonal plane will be the zero degree. Okay, but here it will be it will be the reversed view of the four chamber will get. Okay, so so that you need to so at, when the angle hits at 90 degree, the the uh, secondary view are going to be the reverse image Im, image. So again, here it's a long axis view, and the reverse image of the commissural you will get at a 125 degree. So it has some uh, importance, especially for looking at the ventricular function for this biplane bi examination. Four chamber and two chamber you can simultaneously visualize. You can do a biplane ejection fraction by Simpson, which is more accurate because it is done in the same cardiac cycle. On the transcastic view, if you position the short axis, the LV short axis, the metapillary short axis view, at the same time you can get the LV long axis two chamber view, so you can assess the region of our motion of primarily without much probe manipulation. So, and again, another important, you can see the one of the peculiarity of this uh, imaging is that the primary image here I have kept at the aortic valve short axis view, and the secondary image, you can direct any plane within the primary image. That is very important. Here, I have kept the cursor, which is going in the right coronary cusp and the left coronary cusp. So we are going to get the coaptation between the right coronary cusp and le left coronary cusp in the second review. Now I am changing the uh, plane, this plane, uh, in such a way that you are go it is going between the right coronary and non coronary cusp. So you are getting a second review where the coaptation between the right coronary and non coronary cusp, and you can see a little bit of speck of calcium in the non coronary cusp. So 
So you can direct the secondary view anywhere within the primary imaging plane. So that is another advantage of simultaneous multiplane imaging. But one of the limitation of this thing that if you look at the frame rate, so in a single plane, plane frame rate is around 52 hertz, but in the uh, simultaneous multiplane imaging, the frame rate comes down to 36 hertz. So you are losing some camera resolution. That will be the trade of this uh, imaging. Again, another important utility here, you can see the uh, transcast, uh, sorry, the mid-esophageal tricuspid, bicaval tricuspid view. You are visualizing the tricuspid valve here, intravitreal septum here, and I'm uh, uh, directing the secondary view in such a way that I'm uh, visualizing the aortic valve here as well as the superior part of the intravitreal septum. Again, this view become a very important, especially the cardiologists want to puncture the septum, intraretinal septum for transeptal puncture, we can, by visualizing this view, we can avoid injury to the rise of the tricuspid valve or the aortic valve. Now, again, the, another utility, if you are using saline contrast study for assessing patent for amino, which I have seen, which I have told about uh, uh, when I was uh, discussing about the bicaval view. So here, we are uh, saline contrast uh, study, uh, was given, dedicated saline was given to participate the right atrium, Valsalva was given, and you are looking for the right uh, leftward movement of the intraatrial septum and appearance of bubble in these two imaging planes. So any bubbles, more, uh, more than three bubbles uh, will indicate consistent with the presence of patent for amino way. So, so this is uh, another application. Again, you can see, normally you are going to see an anterior curse and uh, uh, right posterior cusp in the case of a pulmonary valve in the upper esophageal aortic arch short axis view. But by changing the plane, you can see the other, uh, all three cusps of the pulmonary valve. So these are the, some of the advantages of simultaneous multiplane imaging described in the present guideline. Now, we go into a, a specific structural imaging. There are certain additional views are described for coronary sinus, inferior vena cava, hepatic vein, superior vena cava, etc., and some of the 3D examination, which I am not going to discuss, but I would like to show you coronary sinus view. So critically, we have seen the bicaval view. We a little bit advanced approach. You are going to see uh, the coronary sinus curving upward in this direction. And coronary sinus can also see, uh, visualize or image uh, in from the four chamber view. We advance the probe a little bit down. So you are going to get the coronary sinus, which is in the hand. If you have in the cloud group, this is a good view for uh, retrograde cardiology of the canal operation. I will see, again, this view can be uh, uh, obtained from the bicaval view, advanced approve, and a little bit of uh, angle rotation towards 90 degrees, you are going to get the long axis view of the IVC, which may be important for us. The dimension of the IVC may give an idea about the right atrial pressures, and, uh, and this view helping guiding the catheter as well as cannula placement. And hepatic veins can also be visualized by rotating the angle around 45 to 60 degree. You can use a color Doppler and pulse wave Doppler to interrogate the hepatic vein. You look for the RV filling or diastolic uh, abnormality or TR severity, etc. Now, SVC views, we have seen the bicaval view. You can withdraw the probe. You can get the long axis view of the SVC. And in the ascending iota short axis view, you can get the short cross-sectional view of the SVC. But these two views are not very good for assessing the uh, ultrasound uh, insonation. So actually, this another view is a deep transcastic bicaval view, which was published from our institute. So this can be, uh, where the probe can be advanced the transcastic position and, rot and the angle is rotated around 90 to 110 degree, and the uh, probe is rotated towards uh, right side, you are going to get a bicaval view in the in, in line with the ultrasound beam, where you can assess the uh, superior vena cavity flow, especially this will be helpful in the double pass technique or single pass technique of a sinus venosis type of ASD, where we can measure the uh, um, SVC flow uh, profile to rule out any SVC obstruction. And to conclude, there are uh, 3D uh, imaging also emphasized in the current guideline, so especially for uh, assessing the function of mitral valve, left mitral valve, left atrial anatomy as well as function, left atrial appendage, pulmonary vein view, and the uh, intraatrial septum. So, to summarize, try to do a comprehensive or complete examination whenever possible. The order and number of the views acquired 
may differ for various indication. The twin gauge views are not intended to represent all the image planes that can be obtained. So, uh, to, for imaging specific structures, which is of your interest, from standard image planes, small adjustment of the probe position as well as angle, transfer angle may be required. And these guidelines are primarily based on expert opinion, not validated scientifically. So, that's it. Thank you very much.